everyone and welcome to another episode of Malika's Kitchen and it has been quite a long while since I've last done one of these like it's an entirely different kitchen because it's been a good couple of years but I'm trying out a new recipe today and I thought why not share it with you guys so today I am going to be making lemon and lime curd and I've never made any kind of curd before so this could go horribly wrong but if it does you guys will be right there with me and I'm hoping it will turn out well. I've got a recipe, so I'm just gonna do my best. So yeah, let's get started. But the first thing we need to do is zest these lemons and this lime. And the first thing I want to talk about is I have never used a lime before and I had no idea they were so tiny. Like, I just kind of assumed they'd be the same size as a lemon, but look at them, they're minuscule. So that was kind of unexpected. So I've already washed these and I'm gonna take the lemon and I'm just going to run it across here repeatedly. This can take a while, so I'm probably just gonna cut to uh, when this is all done. I tell you what, that is quite a yarn workout and look how white they look once they've been all zested. So I'm gonna do this with the other two lemons and also with the lime. Just the lime to go now and my arm is so exhausted. I had no idea how physically taxing it was to zest the lemon, but let's get this lime done. I'll tell you what, despite being smaller, the lime was even harder to zest than the lemon was, gosh. Right, let's tighten, let's sort of scrape that into our bowl, make sure we get all of that goodness. Look at that. Oh, it looks kind of like grated pistachio, I guess, where the lime has made it all green. Really weird. So let's scrape all of that into our bowl, give it a nice little uh, tap. There we go. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to put that into our main bowl. There we go. So let's get all of that into our bowl. Give it a, a nice little scrape down. And don't worry, I have washed my hands. Always wash your hands before you cook. There we go. So that's now all scraped in. So now we need to juice our lemon and lime. And I'm going to juice them into this bowl rather than the main one because of the pips. So I want to do them to there and then strain them. So I'm going to cut it in half. Doesn't feel quite as juicy as I'd like, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And then I'm just going to squeeze, because I don't have a juicer, and I can already see the pips falling out, but we're just gonna squeeze it into our bowl. Hopefully you can see that. Urgh, I'm gonna get a fork soon and use that to try and get some more juice out of it. There we go, we've got ourselves a fork, so I'm just gonna use that to really get all of the juice out of this thing and into the bowl. There we go, Urgh, come on, last squeeze. Gosh, this would be like a proper workout in a gym, they just make you make lemon curd. Gosh, getting the zest and juice out of lemons is no easy feat, ah! There we go, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the lemons and lime in half and juice all of them. So now we just have the lime left. I've done all three of the lemons. So let's cut this lime in half. And I've never seen the inside of a lime. So this is what the inside of a lime looks. Basically exactly the same as a lemon. I don't know if I was expecting anything different. So let's juice this lime as well. Get all of that good juice into there. Here we go. So now we have our juice, but as you can see, there are still quite a few pips in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sieve and we're gonna pour our lemon and lime juice through the sieve, catching all of the pips and pulp. I'm just gonna get my fork try and push some, some of that pulp and juice through, make sure we're not missing out on any, any of the good stuff. So let's try, uh, come on, go through. There we go. So that is all that was uh, left behind. And now we have our juice and lemon zest in there. Okay, so with the citrus part sorted, we now need to measure out our cast of sugar. So I'm gonna put a bowl on the top there and set the scales to zero. Let's open up our sugar. And now we're gonna pour in 200 grams of sugar, which I know sounds like a lot, but it's what the recipe requires. So let's put all of that into there. Tiny bit more, perfect. Slightly over, but oh well. It says 204, but you guys can't quite see because of the angle. But this is 204 grams of caster sugar. And now we're gonna take that caster sugar and we're going to pour it into our lemon and lime mix. There we go, oh, that's beautiful. Look at it slowly dissolving in. That is so pretty, wow. I love it, okie dokie. 
So now we need to measure out 100 grams of butter. I'm using margarine. You can see from the lid that I'm always using this to measure it. So let's turn our scales on and we need 100 grams. And I'm gonna try and do it in little chunks rather than in one big bit so that we can um, mix it up into the mixture easier. It's nice and soft because it's been out the fridge for a little while. There we go, another 30 odd grams. 87 grams, nearly there. Just adding it bit by bit, we don't want to go over. That's 98 grams, I'm just going to get a little bit more on my knife and wipe it on, and 100 grams exactly. Perfect. And now we're going to take our butter and we're going to plonk it into the rest of our mixture. There we go. Try and scrape off the lid a bit so it's not left messy. And then I'm just going to get our spoon and get all of the butter off the knife. There we go. Okie dokie, so now I've boiled up some water in the kettle and I'm going to pour it into the saucepan. Now it's very important not to let the water level get too high because we can't have it touching the bottom of our bowl. And then we're going to set that water to gently simmer. There we go, you can see that steam sort of rising up around the water. So I'm not going to set the uh, temperature too high because we don't want it too hot. We want it to sort of gently simmer underneath. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take our bowl and we're going to plop that on the top and we're just going to start gently breaking it down and stirring it a little bit and we're looking for all the butter to melt and like I said we want this to be a nice gentle process, not happening too fast to make sure that all the ingredients combine properly. shell than this. We're just going to pass it between the two, get rid of all that white, give it a shake, there we go. So now our yolk has been separated and I'm going to pour that very carefully into there. And don't worry, I'm not going to be wasting this white, I'll make like a pancake or something later. And now we're going to whisk these eggs together, careful not to get it over the side of the bowl. I'm really worried about it spilling. But I'm just going to be very, very carefully mixing them all together. We want to combine it into one mixture that's nice and smooth and silky. I can see it splashing at the edges, I'm so nervous. This is one thing I like to do with a whisk, just like rub it between my fingers, make it go back and forth, and that creates a nice steady whisk movement at the bottom, as you guys can see. There we go, this is starting to look a lot smoother and silkier. So I'm gonna keep whisking this, but let's go check on our main mixture. So it can be very tempting to turn the temperature up, but it's not supposed to be above a gentle simmer. And I can hear the water below bubbling gently, so that means this is right. And you can tell it's not quite ready for the eggs yet because there are still these globs of butter. So we want to wait until these have melted down completely. There we go. So the butter chunks have almost completely disappeared now. So we can add our egg mixture in. So I'm just gonna pour that in very slowly and gently. There we go, there is our egg added. And now we're going to remove the spoon and use the whisk instead. And we're going to whisk these together until they're all neatly and nicely combined. We want it to be one smooth mixture. There we go. Oh, look at that turning a lovely yellow colour. It's beautiful. And my water below is still on a nice gentle simmer. There we go. And now that this is all mixed and combined, we are going to be leaving this for 10 to 13 minutes. Now we do want to stir every now and then to make sure it's not sticking or we don't want the egg to cook through properly. We just want it to blend and mix the others together to create one solid mixture. The last thing we want is a layer of lemon and then a layer of scrambled eggs at the bottom. So we want to gently stir it every now and then, making sure the temperature doesn't get too hot so we don't want to turn our water back up. So it's been going for about five or six minutes now. It's slowly thickening, not super thick yet, but with custard it doesn't thicken until right before the end. So I'm kind of hoping that lemon curd is the same and it will stay quite thick until nearer the end. But it definitely is making some progress in the thickness department and it's still nice and smooth and combined, which is good. And we'll probably give it another five or six minutes. 
So the curd is really starting to thicken up now. Like, look at that, it's so much gloopier than it was. I think it's probably another couple of minutes and then it's done, because we need to wait until it's thick enough to coat the back of the spoon. And you can like, you can see it on the back of the spoon, but it's still, still a bit too thin, but we're definitely there, I think another one or two minutes now, because it, the speed with which it's thickened up has been really, really quick. It was like thin, 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 whereas now it's a lot thicker and a lot gloopier. So hopefully it should be nearly ready. So that's why it's not completely smooth, but I like that. I think it's going to have a real kick to it. So now what we need to do is take the bowl off of the heat to allow it to cool. So I'm just going to get my oven gloves because the bowl will be hot. I'm just going to remove it from the heat. There we go. And that looks amazing. Smells pretty good too. All right. Well, I'm going to let that cool now, but I think we're going to have a little taste of it. Okay, so I'm going to have a little lick of the spoon now, see what it's like. I'm going to blow on it so I don't burn my mouth. Mm. Oh, that's tangy. That is good. Oh, this tastes so much better than store-bought. Wow. I'm glad all that zest thing was worth it because my arm is still, still pretty sore. So it's still a bit warm and it's not ready yet, but it's starting to thicken up beautifully. Like, look at that. Especially around the edges, you can really see where it's got that bit thick and you can see those ripples that are very sort of standard for, uh, for lemon curd and oh, I can't wait till this is cool so I can see, see what it'll look like and spread it on stuff and taste it. Like I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I, I wanna see if it tastes different when it's cool as well as compared to when it's hot. So I'll, uh, I'll show you guys again once it's cool but I just wanted to show you the, uh, the cooling down process and how it's getting along. Okay, so it's not completely cool yet, but I feel like this is probably as cool as it's going to get for now, and I just want to get it sorted out. Now, at this point, you would normally put it into jars, but I don't actually have any jars, so I am going to putting it into this bowl. It's a Pyrex bowl that I sterilized by washing in hot soapy water and then uh, putting in the oven for a while. So let's get this spooned into here. There we go. I'm just going to pour it in and then we can pop it in, ah! And then we can pop it in the fridge, spilling. It's cause I'm trying to spoon it out left-handedly so you guys can see it better. And this is not my dominant hand, but there we go. Oh, that looks so lovely. Right, it's all spooned out. I'm gonna scrape the rest of it off. So this will now get covered and put into the fridge to cool. And it lasts for a few weeks, but, well, it would last for a few weeks, but there's no way that is gonna be in our fridge and last for a few weeks. It will be eaten within days. There we go. Now I better taste it again to make sure it's still good. So good. Like it is so tangy and so strong. You can really taste that zest, wow. Oh, that's, that, that is strong and I love it. It tastes, have you ever made like homemade lemonade? It is kind of like that, but like richer and creamier. Oh, it's brilliant. I'm like salivating even after it. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. And please do let me know if this is something you've enjoyed because like, I kind of feel like I want to make like a cooking video like once or twice a month or something, but I'm not sure if that's something you guys would enjoy. So please do give this video a like, drop a comment down below to say if you would like to see me make more cooking videos in the future. And please do subscribe to the channel for more fun videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.